Welcome to Hotline TV, I'm Steve Shepard. And I'm John Mercurio. Okay, Sonia Sotomayor is getting her Supreme Court seat today, Stephen. After a long and not so bitter confirmation process, Stephen Shepard, you're here to help us take a look back and a look forward at a justice formerly known as Sonia. Now you, coincidentally or not, have the same initials as Sonia Sotomayor, Stephen Shepard, Sonia Sotomayor. That may have been a small part of why you have covered the Sotomayor confirmation process better than anybody else in Washington, at least mm -hmm. by you know objective standards. So we're here today to talk about sort of what, it, what the, who the winners were, who the losers were, some surprises, and some lessons. First of all, who were in this whole process not too, not too controversial, not uh, one of the more heated debates over the Supreme Court. Who are the winners, though? Who, come out of the, who comes out of this other than Sotomayor uh, with a net gain in their, uh, their career? Well, speaking politically, going into a congressional recess where you've Always get, speak politically. Of course. Where you've got um, a very difficult fight over health care, a very difficult fight over climate change, mm -hmm. it is beneficial to the Obama administration to get a win. Sure. And this will be a win point. that they can take with them into the August recess. Okay. However, it's not obscuring the troubles that they've had with health care and the troubles that they've had with uh, cap and trade okay. and some of their other initiatives. Okay. Uh, looking the, at senators, mm -hmm. it, it, we had a lot of interesting votes. Um, some people thought that John McCain, a member of the Gang of 14, right. a, prom, a proponent of uh, uh, changing the way sort of judicial nominations were done, okay. would vote for her, but he's facing possibility of a primary challenge in Arizona right. uh, next year. He voted against her, which is what he had done for her circuit court nomination um, 11 years ago as well. Interesting. And, and a, a, tricky de a, a tricky decision for him because he does face that Republican conservative primary, but he also the faces... The founder of the Minutemen, Chris uh, Simcox. Right. right, and he also faces, though, a rising uh, Hispanic population in Arizona. So uh, what we see, though, is that he doesn't really have, at this point, a strong Democratic challenger. Right. Arizona. You're looking at primary electorates mm -hmm. Electric playing, a, playing a, a bigger role than the general population of these states. And you saw the same thing with uh, Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison, who just gonna say. also voted against Sotomayor in 98 mm -hmm. and uh, will do so again this year. Okay. She obviously facing Rick Perry sure. in the Texas gubernatorial primary. You're dealing with a, a conservative mm -hmm. primary electorate that she um, is courting mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and will have to court against Rick Perry who is fairly popular among that sort of conservative base. Right, right. Now talk to me about some of the surprises. You talk about her 98 uh, lower court vote um, and the comparison now to the vote uh, today. Were there a lot of Republicans voted no and they're still voting no. Any Republicans who voted no in 98 but are voting yes not, today? We didn't see any of those. Oh, um, we didn't see any of those. Who, who voted saw? no in 98 and voted yes but we're seeing the, the other opposite. way around. And I think that speaks more to the way in which judicial nominations are being handled. And it also speaks to the fact that this is a higher court position. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, under the Court of Appeals, and a lot of Republican senators made this argument during the debate that in the Court of Appeals, you have to abide by Supreme Court precedent because, you know, it, they sort of uh, can overrule you. Right. And the Supreme Court, there's no higher court. And uh, so you saw a couple of senators like um, Orrin Hatch, senators like that who actually voted for her for the appeals court and then either set a higher standard or the way in which judicial nominations have, have really been handled by the Senate going back to, I mean, you go look at the last two Democratic nominees, and Breyer and Ginsburg, and they were confirmed overwhelmingly right. with only half a dozen, uh, with only a dozen or so votes against them. Right. Here we're talking about 31, 32 votes against her with look, looking about two hours before the schedule. Well, vote. we're also talking, I think, about the, the, the standard that Senator Obama set up himself during his votes for John Roberts, his votes against John Roberts and against mm -hmm. uh, Alito, Sam Alito. And you even heard George Voinovich come out today in supporting Sonia Sotomayor saying that if the standard that Obama had applied in the Senate for those two justices under a Republican White House uh, were being applied today by Voinovich, he would be voting against her. So you see sort of, I think o Obama during his short time in the Senate sort of po poisoned the partisan well on Supreme Court nominations by opposing them, and not just opposing them, but doing so uh, for what seemed to be pretty partisan reasons. And he filibustered, he attempted to and filibuster, he the Alito uh, filibuster Alito's nomination. I, I don't think it's fair to necessarily blame it on Obama singularly, but he is now 
president, and he was yes, part he of a Democratic effort to do to filibuster Alito to vote against Roberts, and so he is the personification of the way in which that's changed. And you saw it wasn't just um, Voinovich; it was Kit Bond, it mm -hmm. was Lindsey Graham who said the same thing. If you know, thankfully for President Obama, I think Kit Bond said this. Thankfully for President Obama, I am not applying Senator Obama's standard. Exactly. Exactly. All right. What kind of lessons have we learned here, Stephen Shepard, about this process, about uh, you know, uh, Obama as a Supreme Court nominator, um, about uh, sort of the tone of, of Hispanic uh, politics in, in America? Talk to us. Rap philosophically, if you can. I think we've seen that Republicans aren't necessarily afraid of this. Uh, Hispanic backlash that Democrats are threatening. Okay. Bob Menendez yesterday said that you know Hispanics will remember this vote. The Republicans will pay a price. I, Republicans right now, you're seeing the, their, especially in the short term, their primary electorate, uh, both with White House 2012 candidates like uh, Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich coming out, and Mike Huckabee coming out strongly against her. Mm -hmm. You're also seeing um, candidates up in 2010 doing the same exact thing. On the Democratic side, Obama made someone who, by her record, is a fairly moderate choice mm -hmm. by most uh, uh, analyses of her judicial findings. Right, right, right. A lot of Democrats are arguing, and people on the left are saying Obama should nominate a someone who's more progressive next time for a if there should be a future opening during his presidency, because a lot of these Republicans, their argument is. Are going to oppose her anyway? Maybe or, or him. What about Harriet Myers? <laughs> Harriet Myers that? might not meet that more progressive standard. Where has she been? Are you are keeping track not just of this nomination, but of all previous nominees, um, both <laughs> successful and unsuccessful? What's up with Harriet Myers? You know, it's funny. You saw Robert yeah. Bork do a lot of TV interviews. You didn't see so much. You did not see Harriet Myers. And, Interesting. Um, you just aren't watching the right kinds of television. She's I maybe perhaps back in Texas and uh, yeah. on the ranch. Who knows? Who really does know? But we know that she's watching the show today. Harriet, give us a call. We haven't heard from you in quite a while. And unfortunately, that does wrap up today's show. So unfortunately, we're out of time. Have a great weekend. I'm John Mercurio. And I'm Steve Shepard. Thanks for watching Hotline TV.